I'll be honest, I don't really remember how Hassan Whiteside ended up on the Trailblazers, but he's here now, and the Blazers are hoping that he can hold down the fort until Nurkic comes back, and then once Nurk is here, that Whiteside can be the backup five, I guess? Maybe Zach Collins would be that, I don't know. But I think it's safe to say Hassan's going to be playing a decent amount of minutes for this Blazers team. So how's this all going to go? Well, the first thing is the obvious one. Whiteside needs to get his attitude in check, which means he needs to be willing to sometimes only take four to five shots a game or just shoot off of offensive rebounds or just be okay with not taking jumpers and not having ball handling opportunities and not getting the ball in the post or anything like that. And hopefully he is okay with that. That was a problem for him with Miami. He also allowed his minutes to affect his play because he just knew, well, I'm only going to play X amount of minutes over this quarter, so I'm not going to play that hard. And then he would get pulled for Bam or whatever, or Olenek. I mean, we know that Miami's offense was much better with Olenek than it was Whiteside. So that's number one. I think given that he's probably going to start day one for these guys and he's going to be setting a million screens for Lillard and McCollum, that'll probably get him pretty engaged. It could give him opportunities to um, go for offensive rebounds because those dudes take a lot of pull-up jumpers and also... uh, Sometimes there might be a switch. Sometimes they're going to trap those dudes and Whiteside can then hopefully just make the right play going towards the rim. Maybe off of one dribble, maybe not. And you hope that this all wakes him up defensively because on his best day, Whiteside is one of the better rim protectors in the league. On his worst day, he's bad outside of the paint defensively, right? And overall, you hope that he's just somewhere in between on those two things. And I will get back to the on-court stuff, but looking at the culture of the Blazers, can they be good for Whiteside? I think so. Dame is one of the best leaders in the league, and the way that this team has stood together through one of the most disappointing playoff losses ever, which was that sweep to the Pelicans, of course, was pretty impressive stuff. So you hope that Whiteside can be welcomed here, and if he has a bad game or a bad stretch or whatever, if he picks up a technical, if he is sulking a little bit defensively because he hasn't had the ball in a couple minutes or whatever, you hope that the Blazers aren't going to make that worse because for all the nice things you can say about Miami's culture and the way that they've done an okay job of remaining relevant, assuming that their team is healthy and Spolstra is a great coach, I do think there is such an expectation towards professionalism on that team that the moment that you show anything that is not that, they kind of start to get you out of the door. Maybe not physically, but effectively. And I don't picture the same thing happening for the Blazers. Now, there is a fine line. I mean, if, if it comes to a certain point where Whiteside's attitude and immaturity just gets the best of him well then the Blazers aren't just going to play him to do it but I think there's going to be a little bit more leeway for him than there was with Miami and now if we get back to the on floor stuff the Blazers game plan defensively has been able to hold up even if the players themselves on defense haven't been that great I mean Nurkic is a good defensive big Harkless was good Aminu was good Dame and CJ got better, but a lot of it was the game plan, right? Everybody knows what to do, whether it's a lot of the time just play the guy off the screen and have the big man back up. Like, the Blazers have been one of the best teams in the league the past couple years at just making teams take the shots they don't want to take, which is typically mid-range jumpers. So I'd like to think that Whiteside can do that, and you hope that that can wake him up enough to be a good rim protector because... I think the one area where this team could get beat defensively, especially now that Harkless and Aminu are gone, is just getting beat in one-on-one situations. So if Whiteside can be that last line of defense, and if all the other things go well to where he's just awake, then yeah, it's a possibility. I mean, the guy does still average, well, like two blocks a game or whatever. Now, I did mention offense earlier. I will mention it again. I do think... 
I think Whiteside has to be engaged offensively, as in I think you have to have him constantly doing something. If you just tell him to stand in the dunker spot, I think that begins the the problems with him. So on top of just the screens that I was saying earlier, like for Dame and CJ, a lot of off-ball stuff could be good as well. I don't really know what the starting lineup for this team is going to be outside of Dame and CJ, and I assume Whiteside. Like, it could be Hood and Collins. It could be Anthony Tolliver because he can just space the floor. It could be Ken Bazemore. I really don't know, but I'm assuming there's going to be at least a solid amount of shooting out there. So Whiteside can set off-ball screens for those dudes. Of course, Dame and CJ will be moving off the ball as well, so that works too. And then we can mention Whiteside's rebounding, where, of course, uh, he can be pretty damn good. And that could just be another wrinkle in the Blazers' offense, where it's already tough enough to defend CJ and Dame. Especially Dame if he really gets going and starts hitting pull-up threes and all that. And if you still have to make sure you get the rebound on Whiteside, then that could be kind of demoralizing for a team if it's like, oh, we managed to play good defense on Dame, but they scored anyway, so... Yeah, there's definitely reason to think it can go well with Whiteside, but, it, you know, all the things that I've said about how the Blazers can have him moving a lot on offense and that'll make him work on defense and the culture can help him out, it's still going to come down to him at the end of the day. Like, he's just got to be okay with um, being basically a run, jump, and dunk center. And if that means at times that Zach Collins has to come in at center because he can actually switch and defend pick and rolls maybe better than Whiteside can and whatever else, uh, Hassan's just, he's got to be okay with that. And we'll see how he handles it. 